Welcome to chapel. Welcome to chapel. Please stand and sing with us. Testing, testing, testing.
Well, thank you for letting me come today. It's a real privilege to be here. I always enjoy coming to do chapel. Last time I was here, it was a special day. It was Earth Day last year when I was here for chapel, and we talked about Earth Day. And today is also a special day. It is the 5th of May. Any Spanish students want to tell me what today is? Cinco de Mayo. Yes, Cinco de Mayo today. Anybody know what Cinco de Mayo celebrates? No? Everybody thinks it's Mexican independence? Mexican independence is actually September 16. The Battle of Pueblo, yes, the battle that they beat over the French. So it is a day to celebrate, a battle of victory, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Um, it's also another special day today, the first Thursday in May. The first Thursday in May, happens every year, the first Thursday in May. Perhaps some of you are going to go to your church tonight for a special prayer day service. It's the National Day of Prayer. Um, you know, presidents had declared days of prayer kind of throughout history, but there was a big stretch of time, almost 50 years, where no president ever declared a day of prayer. And then finally, it was 1952, uh, during the Korean War, Harry Truman uh, declared a prayer day again, and we've had one ever since. It was 1988, almost 30 years ago, that the Congress said this will always take place on the first Thursday in May. It'll be a national day of prayer. But I don't want to talk about that today. Uh, it's another day today, another special day in the life of the church. Not Cinco de Mayo, not National Day of Prayer, Ascension Day, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is Ascension Day today. Forty days after Easter, the day that we celebrate Jesus' ascension back into heaven. That story is recorded for us in Luke chapter 24. If I can get my glasses here. Luke 24, the very last few verses of the book of Luke. Then he, that is Jesus, led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. Today is Ascension Day, the day that Jesus goes from earth back into heaven again. Now, when I was in high school, every church on Ascension Day had Ascension Day worship services. Ascension night. It was just regular. 40 days after Easter, on that Thursday, everybody went to church. It doesn't happen very much anymore. Maybe because we don't appreciate the significance of the Ascension. If there's no Christmas, then Jesus is never born. We don't have a birth of our Savior. If there's no Good Friday then Jesus never died for our sins and we are still lost. If there's no Easter, Jesus never rose again and we don't have new life in Him. If there's no ascension, how do you finish that sentence? What's this, what difference does it make that Jesus ascended back into heaven? That's what I want to talk about for just a couple minutes this morning. There were definitely blessings for Jesus in the ascension. It was a validation and a vindication that he had done what the Father sent him to do. Remember, the crucifixion was not only an incredibly painful death, but the crucifixion was a symbolically painful death. To hang someone up on a cross was to make this statement. You are unworthy 
to have your feet set on the ground and God will not receive you up into heaven. You are hanging between the earth and the heaven and no one wants you. That was the symbol of crucifixion. In the ascension, we have the vindication of Jesus and the validation of his work as he does ascend now from earth back into heaven, received by God the Father, saying, you have done what I sent you to do. It was a blessing for Jesus as once again he returned to the glory that he had with the Father and the Spirit from all of time. Think of that, from all of time, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit existing together in perfect fellowship. And then during the incarnation, Jesus leaves that perfect fellowship and comes to earth, but now he returns once again. It was certainly a blessing for Jesus to go from earth back to heaven. But it's also a blessing for us. That's what Jesus taught us. In, uh, in the book of John, Jesus is getting ready to go back to heaven, talking to his disciples. He says this, Now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. It is to your advantage, Jesus says, that I go away. Think about that. Jesus had been teaching the crowds. He had been teaching his disciples. He had been teaching his three closest friends, Peter and James and John, and they had what wonderful blessings of learning from him. And now he says, but it's better, it's to your advantage if I leave you, what's the advantage to have Jesus leave? He's there with them, teaching them. Well, remember, Jesus did come bodily. And as such, he was limited by his body. He could only be in one place at one time. We have no indication in Scripture Jesus ever appeared two places at one time. Now, he could move very quickly from one place to another. We don't know how that happened. But he was ever only one place at one time. And if Jesus had remained on earth, that would still be the case. That he would ever only be one place at one time. He says, no, it's to your advantage that I go away because I'm going to send you a helper. If I don't go... I don't send the helper. If I do go, you get the helper. Who's the helper? The Holy Spirit. The Pentecost event, where 50 days after Easter, they gather for Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit is poured out upon everyone. This is the blessing. This is the advantage, having Jesus gone. If there is no ascension, there's no Pentecost event, where the Spirit's poured out. And without the Spirit, we would have no one to teach us what the Word of God means for us. Again, from John 16, what's the Spirit's ministry? The Spirit doesn't come to draw attention to Himself. The Spirit comes to draw attention to Jesus and the Father. John 16, verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is Mine, therefore I said that He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. Without the Holy Spirit, we don't understand the Word of God. He comes to tell us what Jesus wants to teach us. 
Of course, now we have that Word of God written down for us, inscripturated. Were it not for the ascension, there would be no Pentecost outpouring. Were there not any, no Pentecost outpouring, we would not understand the Bible. The Holy Spirit is given that we might understand what the Son has to say and He says what the Father has to say. The Spirit doesn't come to speak on His own authority. He comes to reveal the Word of God to us. What a wonderful blessing. But it's not there without the ascension. Unless I go, I won't send the Helper. But if I go, I will send the Helper. The Spirit of truth poured out on the church. It's for our advantage that Jesus went back to heaven. Because he came to earth and he finished the work on earth God had given him to do. God sent Jesus to earth to be a great high priest. What does a priest do? A priest offers sacrifices. And that's what Jesus did. He came and offered the perfect sacrifice. In Hebrews chapter 10, we read this. Hebrews 10. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. That's what happens in the ascension. Jesus ascends to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, declaring his work on earth was done. His priestly ministry of offering up a sacrifice for our sins was completed. He sat down. But he doesn't sit down and suddenly become inactive. His work on earth was done. But his ministry in heaven, on our behalf, continues. What is Jesus doing sitting at the right hand of God? He is there praying for his people. Romans chapter 8. Jesus Christ is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, ascension, who indeed is interceding for us. Jesus Christ finished his earthly work, ascends back to heaven, and there is praying for us. The Son of God interceding, praying for you. Do you ever wonder, does God really hear my prayers? When you pray in Jesus' name, it is as if Jesus himself is pleading for the Father on your behalf. You have an advocate with the Father, John will tell us in 1 John chapter 2. An intercessor. Someone who prays for you. One of our Reformed confessions, the Belgic Confession, beautifully describes this work of intercession by Christ on our behalf. And I'll just read a couple lines from, uh, from Article 26. Suppose we had to find another intercessor. Who would love us more than he who gave his life for us, even though we were his enemies? And suppose we had to find one who has prestige and power. Who has as much of these as he who is seated at the right hand of God, and who has all power in heaven and on earth? And who will be heard more readily than God's own dearly beloved Son? Who will be heard more readily than God's own dearly beloved Son? Jesus ascended that he might be in the presence of the Father for you. What difference does the ascension make? Christ himself, eternal Son of God, at the Father's right hand, praying, interceding for you. That is something worth celebrating. That we have one who is there in the presence of the Father. Again from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, 
Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and with full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. God promises that for each and every one of his own, he will take us to be with him in heaven after this life. How do we know? I said, the Bible tells me so. Yes, I know the Bible tells you so, but God has done more than that. He's given us an example. After Jesus completed his earthly ministry, God, who is faithful to his word, took him bodily to be with him in heaven. If you wonder, is it really going to happen? After I die, that God will take me to be with him? Look at Jesus Christ and the ascension. It's a demonstration to us that, yes, God is faithful and will take us, just like he took Jesus from earth to be with him in heaven, so God will take us, fleshly though we are, to be with him. Jesus bodily in the presence of his Father. In light of all this, Hebrews tells us, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. Knowing that we have Jesus Christ, who not only died for our sins, rose for our new life, but now sits at God's right hand, interceding for us, doing his work of priestly ministry on our behalf. The author says, let's us encourage each other toward love and good works. We have a, we have a Savior who is interceding for us, praying for us. Let's us encourage each other as well. We can be in prayer for one another, urging each other toward good works. We should not neglect meeting together, as the author says, as some are in the habit of doing. But continue to meet regularly as the body of Christ because of the ascension. Jesus Christ, our advocate, sits at the right hand of God. It's a, it's a great day to celebrate today. Celebrate Cinco de Mayo, great. We'll have a taco, fantastic. Celebrate prayer day, good. Spend some time in prayer. Don't forget. It's also Ascension Day, a day of celebration in the life of the Christian church. Once again, from, from one of our confessions, the Heidelberg Catechism, talking about the ascension of Christ, the question is, how does Christ's ascension to heaven benefit us? Okay, first of all, the catechism is so incredibly practical. It never gives us abstract theology, but always, how does this benefit you? What good is this to you? How does Christ's ascension to heaven benefit us? First, he pleads our cause in heaven in the presence of his Father, our intercessor. Second, we have our own flesh in heaven, a guarantee that Christ our head will take us, his members, to himself in heaven. And third, he sends his spirit to us on earth as a further guarantee. By the Spirit's power, we make it the goal of our lives, not earthly things, but the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We celebrate the ascension. Let's pray together. Lord our God, we look to you as the great and faithful God the one who sent your son to earth to perfect, perfectly accomplish the mission you gave him to do, to die for our sins, to raise to new life, that we might have new life as well. And then, and then you took him back into heaven as a glorious reminder, as a picture for us, and as the truth that he would continue his ministry on our behalf. Lord God, may we rejoice on this day, a day of celebration in the life of your people and the life of your church, that right now we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who pleads our cause. May this encourage us to set our minds not on earthly things, but on heavenly, where he is 
our head, our high priest. Hear us, O God, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please stand and sing with us. missed.